Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms, and I'm going out to cut down a tree today. But I don't really know where I'm going or what the tree looks like or what condition it's in. So this is one of those deals where a viewer said, hey, I love watching your videos, and I don't live very far from you. I've got a tree I need taken down. Would you be interested in doing it? And I just feel like doing it. He sent me one picture of the tree, and it looked really tall. I can't tell the diameter. It didn't have any bark on it. And I don't know. I guess we'll just find out when we get there whether this is going to be a simple deal where I just drop it and go or if it's going to be something I have to be really careful with. He's also got a different brand of tractor than mine, so we'll take a look at that. Should be a fun day. See you out there. The tree I'm here to get is the one you see right in the middle here with no bark on it. And this is kind of the picture of it I saw, but as I get up there, it's a little worse than what I thought it was. But I think I'm going to bring it this way up the hill and probably clear a lot of this little stuff in front of it. Let's go get a closer look. Oh, I can just almost reach around it. Pretty good size, but I've cut a lot of trees bigger than this one. The difference with this is it doesn't have a clear path to fall, so I have to negotiate that. All the bark's off of it, which makes me wonder how dead this tree is. And it is on a little bit of a hill, so I have to make sure I've got good footing and an escape path. The other thing is I don't see any lean on this or any difference in the weight distribution. It feels like this is perfectly balanced and perfectly straight up and down. So I could take it any way I want. So it's just a matter of, I think if we go this way, it might be easier to get it out afterwards. If we can get a shot of what the top of the tree looks like. This isn't a field tree like what a, a lot of my cut are field trees and they go more out than up. So not as much weight as I'm used to at the top, but it is a chance of one of those, if this is hollow, of having a branch come down on my head, of having a branch come down on my head, of having a branch come down on my head. I'm going to get comments I always do that say, just cut the thing. For me, I'm not a professional, but I have done quite a few of these, and my key is take your time. Think about it. Look it over. Not production logging where I've got to get so many board feet out today. I just want to get this tree down without getting hurt. So... I take my time. The ground level is coming down pretty steep. I don't know the angle on it, but that's the other reason I think I'd rather be downhill of it. So I think before anything else, I'm just gonna poke a hole in this tree and find out if it's hollow or not, because that could really change what I wanna do. So I'll probably cut it down, down here. I think I'm just gonna do a bore cut right here and find out what we have. It's soft, but I wouldn't call it hollow, so I think we're going to be good. So that saw went through really easy, but the chips are not that dark brown from a rot.
Okay, everything I've done lately was bore cuts. But that's because all those trees were leaning and already wanted to go one way. This one is straight up and down and balanced, so I'm gonna have to wedge it the way I want it to go probably. I actually forgot my wedges, but I got a big steel one that I can make work. So on this, I'm not going to use that bore cut. I'm gonna make a traditional face cut down lower then start a back cut and wedge it over. They say that you always judge a feller by his stump and I uh, wouldn't give myself a very high grade on this but the thing with this tree is I really believe it was perfectly balanced because I cut it down to a hinge that was two inches and normally at two inches my trees are I'm trying to keep them from going but this thing at two inches I was burying this wedge and look how fat that wedge is. I was burying that wedge and I couldn't get it to go over. When it finally went, if you look right here, the hinge right here was down under an inch and the other hot side had no hinge at all. So definitely not something I would advise to cut all the way through your hinge. But I was trying to go slow and I was driving wedges more than I was running the saw. So maybe I should have had another couple sets of wedges over here and over here and here and just kept working them. Or the alternative is to have something pull, but there's not a lot of opportunity to get uphill from this and pull. So anyway, it's always successful when it comes down and no one got hurt. But I, there was actually, I would guess I would call it, the, I had an accident during this falling because when this fell it hit another tree and a branch off another tree fell and hit me in the head and I can't even figure out what it was because there's no branches laying next to here that looks like the right size for the impact I felt or that are turned the right way I don't know what fell on me but a tree branch hit me so I'm glad I was wearing the helmet always wear a helmet if you're cutting in the woods but the tree's down, and that's what I was here to do. So I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.